Well, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer that, but I know who is qualified to answer that. He's Ryan Finkelstein, and he joins us live here on the BetQL Network. It's Sunday's Bets with Guru and Dibs. So, Ryan, I'm, I'm going to play the uh, the intermediary here on the 6-4-3 double play. I'm going to relay the throw from Guru to you. Are you surprised that the Mets are doing this without Big DeGrom? I'm not surprised that the Mets are in first place, but the way they're in first place, I'm certainly surprised. I mean, you look at this starting rotation, I think we all kind of knew that Scherzer and Bassett would be very good, but what they've gotten out of Carlos Carrasco and Tyler McGill and even David Peterson at times has just been unbelievable this season. So the starting pitch has been incredible. The lineup has been hitting, uh, and this team's just rolling. I I mean, to come off of that game on Thursday, uh, as a Mets fan, it's pretty uh, surreal right now, to be honest with you. It is. Let me ask you this about Francisco Lindor. And I know he came to town. He got paid to come to town. And I watched the game last year, and uh, he had a bad uh, A-B to end the game. And then Met fans were going in on him. But I'm looking at him now, five home runs, 241. Has he been what the Mets expected, and has that relationship improved between Lindor and the fans? Uh, The relationship has improved 100%, especially with, obviously, the fast start this year. Uh, you know, on my show, I, I've tried to give a lot of context to Lindor's struggles last year. If you really looked at it, it was the first two months where he was just terrible. And, and it's really hard to go from a market like Cleveland to New York and then also do with the pressure of signing that contract, $341 million on the eve of the season. I, I really think that wow. hurt him. And, and you look at what he did from June 1st on. Last year, his numbers were pretty comparable to who he was for all those years in Cleveland. So I think that his season last year, if you really look at it and you kind of look at the context behind it, he wasn't as bad as it seemed when you looked at the complete stats. And now what you're seeing is the same guy that we saw for all those years where he could be the best shortstop at baseball in times, a guy that can hit home runs and just play great defense over at short. What's the mentality? of being a Mets fan where you've had so much promise for so many years yet such little success it feels like this year is almost like the 80s all over again where you've got all the talent but can this be a time where the Mets actually bring one home I I think so I I think the big difference is it's it's hard to ignore the, the Steve Cohen impact when you have a team that is able to to go through a season where you have the collapse that they, they did last year, to have the uncertainty with Jacob deGrom, and you can just kind of spend away your problems and sign a Max Scherzer for $130 million over three years. It, it just changes the math on this team. They're going to be competitive for years to come, and they're not only you know set up for this season, they're pouring money into the farm system, into, into scouting player development. So I think that the Mets – are going to become a team that's going to be one of the crown jewels in baseball, thanks to Steve Cohen. And this is the first year we're really seeing the fruits of that. Let me ask you this, because I know a lot of sports, and rightfully so, is about the stars and the big names. But I followed a guy uh, when he was a Pittsburgh Pirate who is now a Met, and I always appreciated watching him play, and that's Starlin Marte. What can you tell us about him and, and, and how Met fans – are liking to see him perform on a daily basis. Well, I'll tell you, you know, last, I think September, I started talking about Marte to the Mets because it just made so much sense. They had to to improve that outfield after last season. They just didn't get much of anything out of guys like Dominic Smith and Kevin Pillar was getting a lot of runs. So now you see Starling Marte and it just brings a dynamic the Mets haven't had since Jose Reyes with his speed, the ability oh. to, to get an infield hit, steal second, maybe there's a bad throw that gets him to third, and to score on a pass ball. We've seen that happen a couple times this year. It's just a completely different dynamic. And, you know, I kind of compared the signing to Curtis Granderson back in 2014. The Mets signed Granderson to a four-year contract, guys that had previously been center fielders that end up moving out to right field, and the defense can play up even more over there. And I, I think you see a similar veteran impact that a Granderson had to help that 2015 Mets team go to the World Series to the way Starling Marte has played the game. Guys that just play the game the right way and have a lot of experience at winning baseball games. The Mets seem to be magnets for the baseball this year. They lead MLB in HBP, hits by pitch. They talked to the league last week about this factor. What's the reason that the Mets have been hit so often by pitches? You know, I really don't know if there is an exact explanation for it. 
Um, you, you, obviously, when you have good hitters, pitchers are going to want to come inside. That, that that's something that they have to do to challenge them. And and, and at times right now, I, I think because of the the way the baseball is, it's tough for these pitchers to get a grip. And, and you know, some of these pitchers, quite frankly, are hard throwers that don't have the control. So I think it's just um, sort of a coincidence j- j- that that the Mets have have been sort of the face of it this year, getting hit by so many pitches. But the one thing I will say is, is it has. Uh, sort of built a camaraderie among the the team. You know, Buck Showalter is setting the tone every single time that that a Met gets hit. You see him walk out to the front step. I don't know if Buck Showalter is really scaring anybody on the other side, but he certainly is staring down the pitcher, staring down the opposing dugout, and sort of creating an us versus them mentality. And I think that the Mets have really fed off that. Let me ask you this. I know it's early and the Yankees are off to a good start, but the Mets are off to a good start. What's it like in New York right now? The Mets getting that love? I think so. I think people will always tell you that, you know, uh, when, when the Mets are winning, it's a Mets town. Now, now I'm sure a Yankees fan would, would come back on me about that, but I really do think that is the case. And I also think that it's great when both teams are good. When you're seeing both of these teams atop their division, um, you know, there, there's a chance that we could get another Subway Series, World Series this year. That would be a, a incredible fun. And I'm sure that when these two teams meet in the regular season, that's going to be sellout crowds and a lot of drama. I love it, Ryan Finkelstein. Thank you for joining us. We'll keep an eye on the Mets throughout the course of the season, and uh, we hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you having me on, guys.